The views and opinions of the Fire 100 podcast are those solo of CJ100 and Tez the Fire. Any content addressed on this show is their opinion and not intended to offend any religion, ethnic group, organization, company, or individual. The Fire 100 Podcast. The Fire 100 Podcast. The Fire 100 Podcast. The Fire 100 Podcast. The Fire it's the Five One Hundred Podcast. All right, what's going on, y'all? You tuning to the Five One Hundred Podcast? Yes, sir. Your boy CJ One Hundred, my guy Tez the Five, mm-hmm. and we got a. Sp- Special guest in the building, man. Yes, Big sir. dog Brink TV. What's up, my guy? Yes, sir. What's happening? What's happening? How you fellas doing this evening, man? Man, Amazing. good, man. Blessed and highly favored. Yes, you know sir. what they say, man. Yes, sir. Hey, we above ground, ain't we? I'm <laughs> winning. <laughs> winning, man. I'm telling you. Yeah. Man, and look, I've been waiting to do this for a minute. And 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 uh for people that don't know, me and Brink got a little history, you know what I'm saying? Back in the day when he was building this thing from the ground flow. Like, he had a vision back then. He was always a different guy. Back then, I was really heavy on the rap. I had my manager. My wife was there. It was some, it was some good times, bro. And uh, I just saw the vision, man. And just 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 speaking from that experience, man, how, how do you feel just looking back? That was, what, 2015? <laughs> no, was, that was a while, man. Yeah. You know, I was telling my mom today, um, you know, about the podcast, and I was going to do the podcast, and I was like, yeah, he was on the show back in the uh, the gray sheet era, and mm. then she's like, "What you mean?" And I was like, "That was my background, a gray yeah. sheet." Yeah. Like, <laughs> and then, like, you think about fast forward to now, we got the white couch, we got yeah. a real set. Like, yeah. it, it's it's crazy, but I mean, to imagine all of that, like, it was just a vision, like you said, and for it to be reality, man. I can't say I didn't think it'd happen, but right. I'm thankful that it did happen. Right. You know, because a lot of this stuff, man. Like I say, this stuff that I thought about when I was 17, 18 in high school, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Like yeah. watching BET 106 in Park. Yes, yes, because sir. believe it or not, fellas, the original idea was to get a red couch just like them. Yeah. You know, and <laughs> I was, I mean, scouring. I'm going from furniture store to furniture store in the city trying to find a red couch. Couldn't find it. So all of a sudden I see this icy white thing and I see, you know yeah. what? Yeah. Guy that got the cocaine white, yeah. cocaine music going, I'm going to do it too. So yeah. hey, we've been icy white ever since. Yeah. Yeah. But but definitely it's been an amazing journey, man. And I'm, I'm glad to still be on it and glad to continue to expand and inspire people all over the world. Like yeah. I be checking them um, analytics, man. Ooh, Ooh, see, yes, sir. I check analytics from just the YouTube and then of course you'll see a lot of global things. But I check analytics from the Brink TV show website, okay. and I see the same global results. Mm, yeah. Now, you got to think about it. YouTube, you know, it might be an interview with a celebrity or something like that, so maybe a fan from that country might like them. Right. But the website, you got to know somebody that knows something yeah. back. Right, you know? yeah. right, so right, it's right. like, wow, I got people from Tobago and, you know, yeah. the Ukraine and all yeah. of that, like, tuning into my website. I'm like, how you find me? Exactly. Yeah. I'm just a kid from South Memphis. How you, you hear find me? me? <laughs> you know? But uh, it, it's it's all wonderful, you know, continuing to take that in and stay humble. Like, that's that's where I'm from, Humidity Avenue. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. I get, uh, To go off the analytics, man, we, we looking at it the same way. Like, we look at them stacks and we like, how somebody from Italy know us? Yeah. Right. It's I like, crazy. It, it's just... It's humbling too. Yeah, and then sometimes, man, like you wonder about that person. Be like, dang, are they old? Are they young? <laughs> yeah. Are they yeah. fat? Are they yeah. short? You know, yeah. it's a fine big booty woman. Like yeah. we don't know, but right. it's amazing to know that you got fans global. They reach. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they, all that from the nine oh one. Like, come on, man, man. we got to pat ourselves on the back. Yes, yeah, so yeah, man. Yeah. Hard Memphis, work. Memphis putting it out, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Memphis putting it out. So, so let me ask you a question, bro. What I mean, I, I guess I heard some of it, but what really inspired you to get in the media, and 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 specifically the the me the type of media that you do, because that's not typical, especially coming from where we come from. Mm-hmm. Man, kind of like the same background you came from, as far as being an artist. You know, okay. uh, I was an artist when I was in high school. I was a teenager. You know, I was uh, I was making my own beats. Okay. I was writing my own lyrics, um, doing my own graphics. Like I was doing everything. Um, 
I, I started to learn more about the music business, the side of it, and that's what I didn't know anything about. Right. And as I learned more, I was going to different panels and seminars and all that type of stuff, and I learned more about the business. And by then, I felt like I learned enough. I was like, you know what? I don't even want to do this no more. Mm-hmm. Okay. So yeah, I this, feel this was probably maybe 2010-ish, you know, around that time. But let me rewind it back to 2008. I was an artist, of course. Um, I went to New York. Uh, I was passing out copies of my CD, you know, because I was, you know, in Manhattan or whatever, just visiting. And I went to 106 in part yes, sir. Like, and I, as an audience member. I ain't trying to, you know, fake yeah. y'all yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I was on, you know, I was on the red couch. I was, <laughs> I was wild out Wednesday. Nah, that's yeah. not the case. I'm going to be honest. I was in the crowd. Yeah, okay. And just the electricity that I felt just from being an audience member right. and watching them do their thing and seeing the whole inner workings of that, I was captivated. And, you know, eventually I remember seeing, like, Bow Wow hosting the show. And yeah. I'm going to be honest with y'all, man. Me and Bow Wow have always, I've always had, like, an unspoken rivalry with that guy. Oh. <laughs> we the same age. Is it the braids? Now, see, that's part of it. That's part of it. We the same age, yeah. braids, rap, yeah. you know, all of that type of stuff. And I wanted to not necessarily be him, but I want the same opportunities right, he got. Right, 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 you know, right. I used to hate on and be like, man, he don't even write his own song. Yeah, man, yeah. Pre-write. <laughs> I write my own stuff. I make the own. I make my piece. What he I got that I ain't got. Yeah. Exactly. So when I saw him as a host of 106 in Park, it kind of sparked me to go more into that direction. You know, okay. it kind of, you know, I was like, man, come on, you know. So um, Bring TV actually started as a, a a video blog, or as they call it, vlog. Yeah, you okay. Know. We talking about 2008, like when nobody really doing that type nope. of stuff, you know. Um, I started out just talking about the very first thing that I spoke on on Brink TV was when the Memphis Dri- Grizzlies traded uh, Marcus. No, they traded Pau Gasol. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's the only all-star we ever had. You idiots, right, you this, right. you that. And it yeah. started getting that's Memphis traction. For you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we always give up the goods. We get up. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, like it started out with that and – um. Just it just continued to transition. I was talking about other topics, other topics, and I had a buddy. Um, he was getting ready to come out of prison, you know, get out of prison, right? And then I wrote him, you know, I told him about. It. I was like, hey, um, I got this new thing I'm doing, man. When you get out, I should I should interview you. Like, right? It made no sense to me because I never had that aspiration, but I saw that was the thing that was beginning to you know really trend is people interviewing other people, mm-hmm. right? So. I just kind of, you know, jumped on that bandwagon in 2008. And when my guy came home that summer, I interviewed him and in my living room. It was crazy in my right. living room. And it just took off from there. Yeah. You know? And ever since, like I said, we've just been continuing to grow and um, transcend the vision into reality. And yeah. that's pretty much where it's at. But definitely started with Bow Wow. Yeah. yeah. And when I see that cat, it's going down. <laughs> it's going down. <laughs> it's funny that you say that the rivalry thing because my the rivalry guy I got is Neo. Okay. I, I literally <laughs> believe this man took my life. Okay. Yeah. Born in the same year. We both write music. Yeah. We both uh, had singles and all that and it's like, bro, this man literally just took when we when we came down from the heavens, the bodies got switched. I was supposed to be him. He's supposed to be me. So, so you saying he ended up with Miss Independent, and you did, right? Right. I'm like, come on, bro. Hey, my boy got the pipes, man. Yeah. Okay. Tell you, okay. Tell my boy, my boy got them pipes, man. He he bashful, whatever. Yeah. But my boy got them pipes, man. That's one thing I know about Memphis people, man. We all got different talents. You right. know what I'm saying? Not just what we do on the regular. We all got right. a whole bunch of things we right. can do. And that and to go off your point, that's what's crazy. I I don't I don't think you ever thought that that's what you would be doing. And it's like it's making waves. And that's how we feel too. We we talked about this on forklifts in the air. Like this is what we <laughs> yep. wanted to do. Yep. We never thought we'd do this and it'll make waves. So right. man, just to see it come full circle, I know it got to be an amazing feeling, bro. Oh yeah, it's it's definitely incredible. And and you're right. I never thought that this was what I would be doing. Mm-hmm. I always knew that I would be on TV. You know? Yeah, yeah. First dream was to be a basketball player. Well, okay. I was good. I wasn't that good. You right, know? right. Then right. I wanted to be a wrestler. Well, I'm kind of small, so yeah. you know. And then of course, when I was a child, I had this. Uh, health condition that prevented that dream from happening. So that's why I evolved into music and from music to this. And to be honest, this is the lane that I decided to just stay in mm-hmm. and just, you know, 
I ain't gonna lie, I do got a little merger going on. I'm, 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 I got a sitcom that's about to oh. premiere on uh, CW30 on yes, uh, so. May 2nd, Sunday, May 2nd, <laughs> I believe that's 2 p.m. Okay. So now I'm getting into filmmaking. So. Yes, okay. so. I ain't yeah. just trying to, you know, say that I'm gonna just limit myself. But yeah, I mean, hey, that's I'm, the goal. You know, I'm, I'm kind of laying the lane respectfully, though. Right, yes, no, so. respectfully. You know, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> it's, it's crazy. And not to just, you know, jump into this subject, but it's crazy. When I started doing this, like the sitcom, like, Actors, actors, actors here in Memphis, they's like, hey, who are you? Where did right. you come from? Why didn't you call me? And I was like, oh, my bad. So that's what I mean by respectfully. Like, yeah. yeah. I didn't, you know, consult with them like, hey, you should come do this. But they came to me. So, I yeah. mean, it yeah. just let you know, you know, that I got a little a little flavor out here. You know, yeah. I got yes, a little, little cloud yeah. out here, a little sauce, you know, a little sauce. You earned it, though. Yes, so hey, you did. Long time yeah, coming. Yeah, put that <laughs> work in, man. I'm long time you. coming. But it's just, it's, it's, beautiful, to, it's beautiful to be able to... Um, crossover and get into other ventures and other realms that I never thought would be possible. So that's the best way I can uh, summarize that. Um, I don't know if you remember this. I, I remember I remember my interview like it was yesterday. Okay. But we had a conversation about um, music okay, and the direction that it started in and where it ended up in that time of 2015, right? Okay, okay. Um, and I was thinking about a conversation we had about how uh, music was so loving. Mm -hmm. Music was more of a, a motivator mm -hmm. back then, and I, I think I think it's I think it's kind of starting to take that turn. Mm -hmm. But um, as far as you, you doing what you do, interviewing the artists in the city, you've seen mostly every upcoming artist before they got to where they are today. Most of them, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I, I I just remember like I just remember how many interviews your ass was doing. Like it seemed like you was dropping one every day. Mm -hmm. So. If you could, if you could kind of like explain how you got to where you are, like I mean, I, I, it's not as simple as keep working, keep working, but <laughs> like, what, like what, what was the not the secret sauce, yeah, but a little yeah. bit of the recipe to how to get yeah. to where you are now. Mm -hmm. Definitely not the formula, you know. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. Is you got it, Mark. But yeah, I guess you, you got to You got to earn the, the formula I for can, yourself. I can, right. I can spell it out for you. Uh, basically, um, it was the ability to offer something that wasn't in this market it wasn't prominent in this market mm -hmm. um i can remember 2010 being the only guy in the club with a camera okay you know all in vip when the celebrities come you know shout out to club senses like they really yes, show community <laughs> love like yeah. they used to you know and i don't know if i well, i can say this it's so many years later but i mean my guy uh, Polo, Polo was like one of the managers there, and like yeah. dude used to give me bottles. I used to be in VIP. He used to give me bottles like I was the celebrity, right? <laughs> because to him, I was the celebrity. Right, yeah. But I was like, I'm just, I'm up and coming, right? But like, certain people provided certain things for me to be branded and established in front of other people. And, and what's it was crazy about what you just said? We've been talking about this so much. Yeah. It's like it. it I'm not gonna give you anything, right? But once I see you grinding, yeah. working for something, you will find that brothers will help you, bro. Yeah, you know will. what I'm saying. But they're not gonna give you nothing. But they right. see you grinding, right? That makes a big difference. And, and, and our job is to to reach our hands down to those guys that are trying to have right. something. We got to get that. Right. That's got to that's got to become a cool thing to do. Yeah, yep. man. I'm gonna be honest with y'all, man. There's been so many artists that I have let come on the show for a discounted rate just uh -huh. because I see what they're doing and right. I respect what they're doing. Right. It's a handful, minuscule amount, about that many yeah. that I let, uh, you know, come on the show at no charge. But, yeah. like, the discounts, man, that was heavy. And I think in the beginning that was something that really helped me out, you know, because, I mean, I'm going to be honest, man. I'm from South Memphis, 316. You know, <laughs> Southside Pine Hill, this is what we do. Yeah. I watch the Dope Boys. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I learned from the Dope Boys. Yeah. They was giving that cheap, cheap price. Yes, sir. And sometimes <laughs> they would front them junkies. You yeah. Know? And so I treat it the same way. Like, sometimes I see these cats and I be like, hey, man, I'll let you go out here come through for the dub. Right. You know, or the, or, or, or the 150, you know, yeah. or something like that, you know. And... They mess with you more. They shop with you more. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that's that's part of what helped me in the beginning, man, just messing with people on the prices, man. I used to, y'all go trip. <laughs> y'all go trip. I used to do this thing called $40 February. 
forty dollars. Huh? Forty dollars. Just told you. Just talking about forty dollars. My, they high forty. Hey, you I, hear me? Yeah. And, and of course, I got it from um um Baby Boy. I don't know if y'all y'all remember the movie Baby Boy. Yeah, where yeah, yeah, Jody yeah. was, you know, he was finessing, selling them dresses. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then all of a sudden, he was like, I let it go for about forty dollars. Yeah, and then yeah. you see the dude forty dollars <laughs> like that. Yeah. that <laughs> For me, that set the price point for me. And right. I even use that clip in my promotional efforts, like in right. the video. I'll be like, this is Genius. $40 February. $40, you can get an interview for $40. Yeah. You can get a photo yeah. shoot for, you know. Yeah. And so that was a way for me to get my ass in. I can cuss, right? Yeah, you could. Okay. You could. Okay. We real out here now. That was a way for me to get my ass in, man, coming in the game, charging 40 And that's how I got my quantity up. Right. So from there, you will see an artist. And he'd be like, hey, I did the interview with Brink. And then his artist partners, they'd be like, hey, I want to interview with you. And then somebody in their family that's young, that's coming up under them. Right. Hey, I know you. You did an interview with my uncle. Mm-hmm. Two yep. years later, they rapping. Now they come get an interview. Yeah, now, so yeah. what's the price changed by right. then? Cool. But that was pretty much my secret sauce. In the beginning, right. I had that, like God to say, God White shouted, Chief, Chief <laughs> Price shouted. Yo. Yes, I was so. in the club with the bottles. You know they saying? saw all of this. Yeah. They saw me in VIP with Rocco. They saw me in VIP with Kobe Bryant. Now, I wasn't right next to Kobe. Right. But I was you in, in the, the vicinity. Yes, yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. So they saw all these things that really happened, and the proof is in the pudding. Like, all my evidence. That's why I say, ain't no capping with me. All my evidence is on the internet. It is. Right. Right. Yes, People so. can see, literally, down there, everything that happened to me, they can see. I was just telling my mom today, I said, Mama, my whole adult life is on camera. Like, <laughs> Whatever I can tell you about, I'd be like, oh, yeah, better yet, let me show you. Yeah. Like, I can show you better than I can tell you. Yes, right? so. so, I mean, just for that stuff happening, man, me being given uh, granted opportunities to be around certain people, to make certain happenings, to create certain looks, you know. Right. And then being able to sell that to the uh, viewing audience and the uh, customer clientele base. And that's just how they just came in, you mm. know. As the years turn, you know. My stuff went and stepped on. My stuff was a yeah, lot more pure. pure. You know yeah, what I'm so saying? And, hey, I'm straight just, drop. I'm, I'm trying to get to the Colombian white right now. Uh-huh. I'm close. I'm yeah, close. So you but make, I'm working on it. Yes, yeah, sir. So you, you making it there. And we definitely we definitely see that and we definitely respect it. Appreciate you know, it. we definitely going to big you up on that, man. The, the what'd you say, TV series? Oh, uh, yeah, the sitcom, man. The like sitcom. I say, it's, hey, it's going to be crazy. Like I said, man, we, we got. Um, we got some incredible people on there. Um, eventually, I did buckle down and just get like actor actors on there, you mm-hmm. know, because they just kept reaching out to me so much. But my initial idea was just to have um, artists. I wanted all artists mm-hmm. on there because I can put somebody on Brink TV, give them an interview, and then that's it. Or they can have a music video air on the show, and then that's mm-hmm. it. And I was racking my brain like, what else could I do for these artists? And a question I always ask people off camera, I'd be like, you ever thought about acting? You know, mm. and then it just kind of transcended into that. And I reached out, man, I got artists on here. I got like models on here. And I even got some comedians on here, man. And that's going to be dope Um, to see. I don't know if y'all are familiar with, of course, y'all should be familiar with the homie Flameaholics. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah he Hollis. peeling shit out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, pure Memphis. He's got yeah. a part on there, and man, he's hilarious. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I decided to, you know, just really kind of broaden the horizon with this man. It's just, it's gonna be real dope. It's gonna be real dope. It, ain't it crazy how, when you want to do right mm-hmm. to help people, that it it ultimately comes back to help you. Mm-hmm. See, when your intentions are, are pure, yeah, it's like. It's gonna come back tenfold, man. Yeah, so. Like it's. I mean, I just. I, I really. I really look at you, bro. I'm proud of you, bro. Cause, Appreciate cause, it. Because it. it's different when. See, everybody see the the when you actually came up. Yeah. They don't see the the come up. Ooh, you know what I'm saying? It's it's rough, <laughs> bro. It's worth it now. I yeah. got I got that on camera too. The come up. It's, it's <laughs> rough, man. It's rough, man. But I was just seeing like, damn, he got her. Yeah. Damn, he got him. It's like you don't get that by chance, man. Like, like you said, they don't see the come up. Yeah, I got her, but they didn't see me waiting four hours right. just for them to come off the stage. Right. Or, you know, like yep. they don't see that part. They don't see security being assholes and, oh, well, we don't see you on the list. And I'm like, well, hey, I'm supposed to be here. Do it look like I just showed up here with all this <laughs> camera gear right. for the hell of it? I'm right. supposed to be here. Yeah, like, right. 
Nobody sees that part. And to be honest, I don't sell that part. But one day, I'm going to put all of that out. You know, I'm not sure. I was telling my mom earlier today, man, I don't know. I might just do both, you know. Um, I was talking about doing a book. I was talking about doing a documentary. Because the beauty of a documentary, like I say, I got so much footage and I got so many photos and so much, so many stories to really tell. It's like, uh, how can I just fit all this in a book? Yeah, I can have pictures in it, but mm-hmm. I got footage. You yes. know what I'm saying? Like, right. I, I kept the files. Like, I got all of it. Like, yes, sir. You know, I would love to just be on camera and be like, exhibit A. You know, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. you can check this out. Like, right. so, I mean, it's just so much that I, I, I have in the vault, the Brink TV vault, man. So many people that you guys know, like celebrities, before they just really popped. I think mm-hmm. y'all mentioned it, man. I got footage of Migos. I believe this was like the first time they came to Memphis. And I'm telling you, no kidding. The whole, it was at the uh, Mud Island Amphitheater. Mm-hmm. Okay. All them folks was just standing around while they was performing. Then you yeah. know who they were. Wasn't getting hyped. Yeah. We talking about Hannah Montana, all this right, stuff. Right, you know right, right. Yeah. Wasn't nobody doing nothing. It wasn't until they did um, Handsome and Wealthy, which was a single that yep. they didn't put out yet. That's when the folks kind of started rocking. I got that on camera. Guarantee you, the very next time they came out there, everybody was going. Yeah, yeah. I go. You know what I'm saying? And to be able to have footage like that, I was actually on stage with them, you know. And to be able to have footage like that, like I say, man, stuff, it tells a story in its own. You yep, know what I'm yep. saying? Like, And I want to put this stuff out. It's just I got to figure out the medium to put it out. Mm-hmm. You know, I got a lot of stuff, man. Yep. I got stuff. I got stuff from way back. We talking about juvenile performing in Memphis at Club B. <laughs> yes, sir. And old girl on stage with them. She got a dress on, no bra, no panties on. Yeah. She just dress come all the way up, booties right. and titties everywhere. <laughs> I got that on camera because I was on stage with juvenile. Right. Yeah. I got that. Nobody's seen it. You Priceless. Know, it's, it's in the vault. I got man. We did a show at the White House Lounge. I hosted a show at the White House Lounge. Um. This was around Africa in April 2010. Okay. And we had like a twerk contest. And it was so crazy. And I'm going to go on here and say, dude, name. This is around the time. You guys remember uh, Travis Porter, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. Yep. So this is the crazy part. At Club Visions, that same night, Travis Porter was there, right? So it was this cat. And I'm going to go on and say his name. YT Chucky the Truth. He from Memphis. Yeah. Now, Travis Porter used to have an artist named YT that used to be with them. He YT. was on there all the, all the way turned up. Is that YT? Yep. Oh, yep. shit. We didn't yep. know how yep. this guy looked. We didn't know how YT looked. So we thought, we didn't know who, how Travis Porter looked, just to be honest. 2010 videos weren't just, you know. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. was more on BT. We right, really right, on YouTube right. It like wasn't on the internet like so that. So we didn't know how these cats looked. Mm-hmm. So since this guy pulled up, on the scene, we thought this was the YT with Travis Porter. Mm-hmm. The man had the big chains on. So we was all, you know, me and the other promoters, like, we was all like, oh, shit. This, man, this finna go out. Now, mind you, the White House Lounge, that was, um, they used to be the old um, 380 Bill Street. That's at the corner of Bill Street. Uh, I forgot the other names it used to be. But African April, so it was swole. Like, yeah, we it's, had, it's crazy African We April. had probably... Over a thousand of people in there, man. I yeah. still got all the footage on all that. But anyway, fast forward to it. This cat, you know, he's saying, yeah, I'm YT, I'm YT. So we think, oh, shit. Hey, we got Travis Porter in the building. I'm all on the mic hyping this right, shit up. Right, right, right. Of course, don't nobody else know what these <laughs> yeah, niggas yeah, are. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this man had this big-ass stack of money like like this. like You know what I'm saying? Big-ass stack. So we decided we finna have a twerk contest. Uh-huh. And he finna give away this whole stack. We had a twerk contest on the stage, man. We had girls take all this shit off. I'm talking about ass naked. <laughs> that's Memphis for you. Right. But that's the crazy part about it. That stack wasn't real. Oh, oh I don't know, bro. See, we didn't know. <laughs> we thought, bro, was I mean, legit. But you got it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We, yeah. we thought, bro, was legit. Damn. We thought, see, and, and, and I'm saying this. I'm not saying this to shade YT, yeah. Chuck, the truth. You know, shout out to the homie. You know what I'm saying? Or whatnot. But... We thought you were YT from Travis Porter. Yeah. Right. That's why we was all gassed yeah. up. If we knew you was YT from South Memphis or wherever you from, we wouldn't have acted as <laughs> yes. But bro <laughs> finessed the whole party that night. So even old girl that won the, the twerk contest, 
She even came out on Facebook right after that talking about, man, that was full of shit. He ain't even giving the money. We went to the hotel and yada, yada, yada. I don't know. They probably smashed yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yo. By then, Ooh. I got my money for hosting. I was out. I, was I did home. my job. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, so. all of that shit was just crazy. But like I say, I got all shit on camera. Like, yeah. I mean, like, sometimes I like to go back through memory lane and just watch old footage and old yeah. film, but, man, it's, it's just crazy. You're looking man. at history. Yes, yeah, so sir. For You're real. Right. You're right. You're looking at history, history. man. Yeah. And I tell you this, man, you know, shout out to Sean Gunn. Y'all remember Sean Gunn? That's, that's, that's a party master. Sean Gunn, me and him, yeah. we were talking um, a few years back. He was talking about doing, like, a Sean Gunn reunion party, okay. you know, basically for all the people that went to his parties over all the years. We were in talks of bringing Trina here because okay. he asked me. He was like, yeah, Brink, I want to go in with you on this, whatever, let's do it. I was like, all right, bet. He asked me, he was like, you want to have Lil Scrappy or Trina? I said Trina, hands down. Yeah, off the muscle. He mm-hmm. was like, but but, but Lil Scrappy, you know, he had to. I was like, nah. I said, you got to think about it. Look at it like this. Trina, niggas going to come out for Trina just because she it's looked Trina. like yeah, Trina. Right. And she going to bring the women. Exactly. Easy. Easy. Exactly. So that's what we end up rolling with. But I brought him up to say, that man, he's got a lot of footage from his stuff. Yeah, I'm telling you, them Sean Gunn parties was crazy off the meat rack. If he put <laughs> his shit out and I put his shit out, I really feel like, and some others out there, I feel like, man, we can really have like a a, a history of Memphis right documentary. It, it might be like a series, you know what I'm saying? That'd like, be so man. the Say reason it's... the reason I'm saying all that because you you guys said history and. That popped into my mind. Like, you're right. That's Memphis history. That's Memphis night like history. I got footage from Platinum Rose. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. I was a young cat. I was everywhere with the camera. Like, right. VIP, nobody. Like I say, sometimes you would get them, them, um, Security guards who will be with the shit want to be important yeah, you know, ass always, niggas. You know right. what I'm saying? Well, hey, I don't see you on the list, little bro. So you got to wait over here. You got to know the good ones like Bowleg. Oh shit. yeah, you got, you got to know the Cat right ones. Yeah, yeah, you, you got to yeah. know the right ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Bowleg, yeah, man. He ain't truth. never, he ain't never, he ain't never finesse or flex something. Yeah. Man, I appreciate that, man. And um, like being in in clubs like New York, New York, Platinum yeah, Rose, yeah. Uh, the Jet Strip, man. I got so many stories, man. Would y'all believe that? I was in a club. It was, it, it's called, um, I think it's called Kidden. No, is it Kidden? What's that? It's, Kidden's Cabaret? I, I is it a strip club? I think so. I think Kidden's it's Kidden's Cabaret. Mm-hmm. Over there off of uh, Democrat. Democrat. I think Ooh. that is. It's a little is, pink. That, is it the Black Orchid now? Nah, nah. You talking about, you talking about, um, you talking about New York, New York. Um, I'm talking about the one, it's over there tucked off in a little corner. I think it's called on, on Lamb's Place. I think that's Kid's Cabaret. It might Cabaret. be Kid's Cabaret. Yeah, yeah, Cabaret yeah. Yeah. All right, so that used to be the jet strip. Man, tell me why me and Crunchy Black was in that zone. And the oh, club that got raided. Lit. The oh, club yeah. got raided oh, by the police. <laughs> no so, surprise. <laughs> exactly. So they took about 27 other girls to jail for soliciting prostitution to an <sighs> undercover agent. You Damn. know, an undercover police getting officer. Getting it in. They yeah. was getting they were running his ass up. Meanwhile, I'm in this just sitting right next to Crunchy. Crunchy scared as a motherfucker. <laughs> and I can't remember if I told this story on camera yet or on on you know on yeah. film on recording. Exclusive. Yet, but, but I'm telling it now. Fuck it. Yeah. Yes, sir. And, and, and Crunchy, you know me, we good. So you know it's all good. But Crunchy and that John, he's scared. He black as a motherfucker. He's sweating. Look like yeah. look like oil coming down his face. <laughs> he's like, man, bring. I can't go to jail because I think he had some dope on him. Right. And no so surprise. I told Again. him, I was like, hey, I was the cameraman that night. You know, I was just taking pictures. We was there for a party or whatever. Yeah. So I'm like, hey, Crunch, just be cool. Like, just relax. Act like nothing. They ain't go trip if you act like nothing. He just nervous, nervous, nervous. So the police come up on me. Of course, I play the role. Hey, officers, hey, I'm just a cameraman. I'm here for this, here for that. You can right. check my camera bag. I'm right. I'm so inviting. Right, they right, check right, my right, ID, right. I let them go. They get the crunchy sitting right next to me. Oh, we got a celebrity in the house. Oh, crunchy man. fucking black. Right. Look at his ID and then just walked out. Yeah. And I was like, nigga, you straight. But they took at least about four or five guys to jail, too. I guess they yeah. had warrants and dope yeah. on them. Right. And, I mean, it was just crazy. I got so many crazy experiences, man. Like, so, over my life. Well, I ain't going to say life, man. Over my career. Yeah. Like, my adulthood is, man, 
You can make a movie about it, but I, I don't feel like it'll be entertaining. But it might be entertaining to y'all. Trust me. Nah, what you said about the history of Memphis, bro, yeah. you definitely need to shop that yeah. to Netflix. Yeah, right. that's that's that. Right. I mean, you that, see, and Memphis taking off. Yes, so, oh, yeah. Right now is the perfect time to do man, it. Man, shout out to Pooh Shiesty, man. Pooh yeah. Shiesty got Memphis on a whole nother plateau yeah, right man. now. They taking and off. I'm not trying to shit on none of the other guys that's on or that signed or nothing, but... You got that? What, what's that song called? Um, which one? Which one? The the one that got that challenge out, the Junebug Challenge song, the song that he's on. Junebug Challenge. Yeah, you know that dance with that they doing. Oh that yeah, song, yeah, 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 yeah. With him being on that song, you know, and I I know, trust me, I know the name of the song, but I don't know why. I just it, it, it just blank. It right. escaped me right now. But for him to be on that song and that song to just be like one of the hottest songs in the country right now. It's yeah. like you can look at that and be like, there go Memphis. Yeah, we there. Mm-hmm. Memphis DNA is in everything. Every We've been telling everything. people this. Every, I'm everything. talking about rap, blues, country. We got we our DNA is embedded in music. Yes, bro. sir. So we got this show called P Valley and the lady that created who, who it. Who made it? Who made it, bro? She from Memphis. Juicy yeah. Fruit. I used to work, I used to work <laughs> she at She owned the zone. Shout out to Juicy Fruit. Yeah. I used to work at FedEx Hub with her. SPS says I was trying to get down on her back in the day. <laughs> man. Man, I'm talking about, but she's so solid. Bro. Yeah, Yo. she yeah, she in there, man. Uh uh course the producers you know take keith they might stuff on the mcdonald's commercial now. My, my boy got a story with uh, take keith that shit oh, yeah? was so crazy bro i was there um, i was looking for studio i okay. was getting real serious about you know singing going straight into r&b yeah and uh man i'm just shopping studios i had this guy um showing me the studio and um he showed me where his room was at and take Keith room was like right up the hallway <laughs> so man we we walk in the room and I guess they wasn't expecting us. Yeah. Man, Tay Key, I don't know if it was him or one of his guys, man, grabbed the pistol off the desk. Damn. I'm like, I don't think I'm going to record here. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What? It wasn't that little recording studio off of Night Honor. Facts. It was. was. Facts. That's why they Facts. grabbed the pistol. That was the motherfucking, hey, shout out to the Trap House, but that was the that's motherfucking the Trap House. Like, bro. for real, for real. It's that's funny. You named that junk, and that's exact. Like, you had it dead on, bro. Everybody know it. I, I record there, too. Straight drop music. Oh, yeah, straight yep. drop. Yeah, yep. yo. Yep. Yo, no, yeah. You know, yep. and what's crazy, man, is I was actually going to get a spot in that building. Um when I had a little, you know, situation, the property manager in my building passed away, so it was nobody to pay rent to. So yeah. it's like, okay, what Brooks. do we do? Yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, what do we do? Mm-hmm. So I started shopping another spot. I went there, and the lady was showing me around here, and she was. It's funny when somebody is trying to sell you something. Yeah. They use salesmanship. Yes. Why was this lady like, uh, you don't want to be here? <laughs> Your customers right. ain't gonna like it here. They might get robbed. <laughs> they be smoking dope. They be this, they be that. I'm right. like, excuse me, man. Why well, I still want to see it? Can I just see it? We go in the hall, and I kid you not, it's a dude standing in the hall rolling up dope right in front of yep. this lady. And she liked the property manager. And she said, excuse me, young man, you're not going to smoke that in here, are you? He like, oh, no, ma'am, no, ma'am. She was like, oh, okay. And then just continue showing me. I'm like, right. nah, this ain't the spot for uh, me. Man. It's still like that to the show. Yeah, it's the hot. trap house, man. That's just yeah. hot. Definitely. So it's, I want I want I want to ask you a question, bro, that's really burning up okay. for me. All right. All right, you've been successful. And we'll, we'll get a, in a, a little more into your success a little later. Okay. But I want to know, what was your biggest obstacle and trying to to get to where you at now, because we all face them. But yeah, yeah. I'm just curious, what, what what would a guy like Brink go through that could kind of slow you down and kind of get in your way that maybe made you feel like this ain't it? <laughs> Y'all see my whole face and composure and all this shit just yeah, changed. Right, yeah. like <laughs> <laughs> sad face. Yeah. yeah, brought to you by Brink. Nah, yeah. uh, I'm gonna be honest, man. Um, the biggest thing that has been um, preventative. To me, becoming successful has been, um, I'm going to just be honest and say it, like, people who are successful not giving you a chance. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say that. And it took everything within me to say people instead of just saying right, black right. men in power. Mm-hmm. Uh-uh. Let's go. You know, because I'm going to be honest, man, black men in power, I don't know why we brothers you know, we brothers, we don't supposed to be doing this. Right, Shout exactly. out to Trey Styles, our me. boys in the hood. Yeah. But we brothers. Yeah. Why is it that is it possibility? And I'm just going to throw a few hypotheticals at the wall and see what stick. Is it that you don't take me seriously mm. because I'm a young urban 
black man that's hungry and ambitious and I'm not a suit and tie like you. Right. That's one. Or is it, wait a minute, this guy might actually have yep. something. That's what it is. Yep. I go. don't want this motherfucker blowing up Taking and surpassing me yep. and, and being the flavor of the month like I am. That's two. Or three, this nigga ain't got no money. Money only talk to other money. Get, right. mine, get on out of here. Yeah. That's three. I got one more. I don't have titties. I don't have ass. Oh. <laughs> don't say that, bro. So yes, sir. I got to say don't that. Don't say you, that. You want to know why I got to say that? I have proof. Let me. Nah, I ain't going oh, oh, oh. <laughs> to pull out My no boy. text Put the gun down. Nah, 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 nah. I ain't going to pull out no text message. But nah, I got proof, man. Okay. I have, and I this this particular person, I won't say their name, okay, okay. just out the strength of us being in Memphis and okay. um, this person, you know, he got some clout here. So I ain't yeah. going to say the name, but I will speak on the situation. It's a person in Memphis that has some power, and I, I admired, you know, what this person had going on, what this brother's got going on. And so I met this brother face to face. He saw what I was doing, saw me in the action of what I was doing, mm-hmm. was aware of who I was. And I was like, hey, nice to meet you, sir. I'm a big fan of what you do. Okay. You know, I admire what you do, and i love to work with you in the future. See, that's that's that young, black, yeah, respect. humble, exactly. respect. Yeah. I'm coming to you like a man. Exactly. And, and, and that's, you know. before, you, before you go further, that right there, is why men won't do it. Yep. Because cause when, I, when I actually am humble, yep. you laugh in my face. You yep. don't even show me the respect it's that I deserve. It's not respected. It's not appreciated in Memphis because when I do that shit out of town, uh-huh. motherfuckers like, what's your name again? Exactly. Come on. Yep. Because they see the humility. They see that I don't mind picking up the bags and I don't mind carrying the cables and, you know, they don't mind that I, I, I'm, I'm not too high and mighty to be entry level for them. To be a, a intern for them, they don't yep. mind that in other cities. They respect it. Wow! I was messing off with. I don't know if y'all ever heard of Music Choice. It was. A, it's a channel. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah, messing it was off. On Comcast. Exactly. Yeah. I was messing off with Music Choice at Essence Festival, and they respected the fuck out of me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just because of my hunger. You right. know, one of the guys who was working for him was a white guy. All right, but it was a white guy. You know, he was like, "Hey, man." I checked out your YouTube yesterday. You got some good stuff on there. And I was like, wow. You yep. took the time to take it yep. out, motherfucker. You work with music choice. You work for motherfuckers. Right. Who I'm trying to get to. Exactly. You know. Right. But that's out of town and that was another race. Yes, so sir. I want y'all to save those two on y'all uh disk drive, on your hard drive. Okay. okay. Out of town, another race. Yep. Okay. Anyway. Um, so introduced myself to this guy humbly, you know, trying to get in the door, trying to get in the door. And really got nothing, got nowhere with it, you know. Continued to show my face, make sure he saw me, you know, at his um, at his mm-hmm. events. I'll just say it like that. And still nothing, still nothing. I decided to go back to the game, the street game. Right. I had a female co-host. I ain't gonna say her name, but her booty was big as a mug. I mean, it's I still I big. Mine, she is fine, about. little chocolate, little. Woo. <laughs> yeah, I know you're talking Man. about. Man. Yeah. But I'm going to say this. I said, hey, it's an interview that we got to get that's uh, from a celebrity that's coming to the city pretty soon. And this person, this guy that I've been telling y'all about, he's actually the promoter. He's bringing this person to the Mm. city. This is his phone number. I want you to call him and tell him who you are and what you're trying to do. She called him, and I mean, soon as he heard this soft, sexy voice, mm-hmm. oh, hey, baby girl, what you say your name was again? And what's the name of the show? Oh, yeah, we can go ahead mm-hmm. and we can, yeah, we can set that up. I had to go street gang just to get the interview. What yep. was the interview? Nicki Minaj. So that was the only way I got the interview with Nicki Minaj. Wow. I had to run street game. I had to, hey, you see him over there? She's like, yeah, that's the guy you talk to on the phone. Sick him. And she went over there all fine and just, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And we got it. I was just a tag along right. you know, to him. That's crazy. Right. He was just like, oh, okay, okay. This this what you got with you? Oh, okay, okay, cool, bet, bet. All right, so what you say again? You know, and all that. Now you care. That's now you crazy. Care. You know what I'm saying? But sometimes you got to run that game. Yep. You know? Wow. Sometimes man. you got to do things like that, you know, like, 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 uh, um, Malcolm X said, man, by any means necessary. Yes, sir. You know, I follow that teaching. You know, like, I, I run my game by any means necessary. You know, as long okay. as I'm not finna compromise my integrity and who I am as a black man, you know, you never see me in no dress. You never see nothing like that, you know. 
But as long as I'm not going to compromise who I am, what I believe in, what I stand for, hey, I'm out here. I'm getting it. Yes, so <laughs> I'm riding around and I'm getting it. Two yes, so yeah. Shout out to Two Chain. So, man, definitely we want to congratulate you, man, on winning the yeah. Media Personality of the yes, Year Award. Yes, sir. Bro. Appreciate that. Like, that's, that's big, bro. That, that's, that's huge. Watch, watch this ego trip right here. Which one? Oh, 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 you talking oh. about the one from this year or last year? Come on. 2019. <laughs> 20, Come on. 2018? Come on, I won bro. four years in a row. Nah, I'm just fucking with y'all. But I, <laughs> I appreciate that, man. I really do, And man. I seen uh, yeah. uh, my future ex-wife, Carrie Hilson. <laughs> uh, I'm like, damn. Well, uh, my, my boy got some juice. I ain't making moves, man. <laughs> yeah, she's, She uh, made a whole video contributed to my boy. And it was the I love you at the end. That was that's uh, for me. Like, uh, that was just mine. It's the know. I love you for me. Mine. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I mean, you know what I'm saying? You gotta, you know, you gotta put vid- you gotta put billboards in Atlanta, you know, and do shit like that. You right. gotta put billboards in Memphis. And, right. You know, you keep your face out here, man, and yeah. don't be afraid yeah. to um grow. Don't be afraid to grow. You know, you never know what happened when you put put that type of stuff out in the atmosphere. Yeah. You know, just keeping it in the hundred. And that that's one thing I can say, bro, about um our podcast and being able to sit down and talk to you, like, bro, being able to see you and research you and watch a video, like, it, it's a different level. You know what I'm saying? We got a lot of respect coming from the five one hundred podcast side because we understand what the grand is. Like, yeah. we understand. What people don't see, right? The editing, the yeah. this, the that, yeah. the having to, like you say, having to had to go to street game just yeah. to get an interview. Yeah. So, bro, we 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 definitely respect that, man. We we look at it as as we continue to grind. It's our job to push each other up as brothers. Most definitely, I, I agree with you a hundred percent on and that. And I'm gonna be honest, man. I, I definitely respect and appreciate what you guys got going on. You know, uh, when. When CJ hit me up about the interview, I was like, man, yeah, hey, I'm Instantly. with it. You know, I'm with it. You know, yeah. just let me know the specifics and I'll be there. Like I don't I don't um I don't have any reservations to um working with other media here in the city. You know, I've done it. I've done other podcasts, I've done other talk shows and stuff like that. My thing has always been we need more of us. You Agree know, 100. I've never I've yep. never really looked at it on the surface as competition. I look at it like, okay, the more of us we have, then we can have like the Avengers and then more outlets or should I say labels and celebrities and PR and management. They'll be like, okay, um, we got a press run we got to do in Memphis for your, you know, you got an event in Memphis. We got a press run. So we got to go to K97. We got to go to Hot 107. We got to go to Brink TV. We got to go to the 5100 podcast. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's why I'd be like, yes, we need more of this. Yes, sir. You know, that way that we can get on their press, uh, you know, on their press itinerary, you know. Mm -hmm. That's how Memphis would be taken seriously, man. Um, like, for instance, I did an interview recently with the homie, uh, comedian, uh, Billy Sorrells. He, he's a act. I mean, he's a on, um, cast member on Wildin' Out, you know, mm-hmm. on TV Wildin' yep. Out. You know, he's actually, he do morning radio and all this other stuff, got podcasts and all this other stuff, too. And it's like, it's crazy. He had, you know, some shows at Chuckles that he was doing, and it was only like a couple of media outlets that I noticed that he went to. Mm-hmm. You know, his people reached out to me for the interview, and I'm like, damn. How they hear about me? Right. You know, I mean, I know, I know the shit I've done. I know what I've, you know, accomplished. Right. I yes, know sir. what I've put out here. I know what the numbers look like. I know all of this stuff. But at the end of the day, I'm still a person. Even though I'm a business, I'm a person. So yep. I'm still shocked at the end of the day. Damn, how'd you hear about me? Yep. Damn, how do you know about me? I, I mean, that's just the humility, you know. Um, one thing you said, and I, I definitely appreciate and agree with, you was like, you know, when you have that you know, humble nature, you know, that's when they kind of overlook you. And I definitely feel like that, you know. I definitely feel like, you know, my platform has been overlooked by certain um, entities and certain people because I continue to be the guy waving that flag, waving that banner of humility, of waving that banner and the flag of positivity, you know, like inspiring people. Like if I was the asshole shock jock, like you would see things way differently. Right. But right. I've always believed that the shelf life on that stuff ain't that long. Nope. And then the who's who that you really want, they're not gonna mess with you. Mm-hmm. The co- the controversy, they're not gonna mess with you. 
ain't no label gonna call me if I'm constantly talking shit about their artists. You see what I'm <laughs> yeah. saying? Like if I'm like diving in the business, you know, put out a video, all right. So this the real reason why such and right. such such such. You beefing. see a lot of that right yeah. now. Yeah. Ain't nobody the, the 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 label is not gonna call me because they gonna be like, well, damn, why is he speaking on this shit? Right. You know, right, you're right. not in the. You know what I'm saying? So I left all of that alone when I first started. See, I used to do them uh, clickbait videos yeah. when I first started. I ain't going to lie to y'all. 2008, my uh, very first video I did, um, it was 2008, summer 2008. It was this cat in South Memphis. He was like, you know what I'm saying, on some charter lakeside type shit. <laughs> we had a block party in my hood, and he was out there dancing or whatever. And then I put Fabo cranking that soldier boy because he was dressed like Fabo. Yeah, right, 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 right. So I put Fabo. Cranking that soldier boy. Man, don't y'all know that video had like over 100,000 views back then? Wow. Yeah. But see, everybody was mad at it. They was like, that ain't no fake. Yeah, uh-huh. you know? So yeah. in the description, I put fake Bo. You know what yeah. I'm saying? <laughs> but on the title, I put fake Bo. Yeah. You know, right. Clickbait. Yeah. Right. I had another one. And like when I told you guys about when I went to 106 in Park, I was standing outside with my camera waiting in line. Just so happened, um, they don't. I mean, everybody don't take cabs in New York. You know, they got like luxury type cabs where it's right, like uh, right, right. Uh, like Lincolns. You know what I'm right. saying? Yeah. Like like Lincoln trucks. And all of a sudden, this Lincoln truck pulls up, and Roxy from you know 106 and yeah. Park, she stepped out, and I'm like, damn, that's Roxy. She ain't had no makeup on. I mean, she was looking. Right. I was like, that's Roxy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> don't get me wrong, she's fine, yeah. even without makeup. Yeah. Right. That was my it first was time. It that was, was my first time seeing her without makeup, and I was like, you say that was different. So I was like, damn, I should have had my camera already ready and recording right. the way I could have caught it. And some told me to go ahead, take the camera out, and just start recording. Just so happened, the truck never left. Right. She ran back out there to get some. I hit record. I'm telling you, the video is probably about eight seconds long. Right, right. I put it on YouTube, Roxy from 106 and Park with no makeup. The video mm. got over 500,000 views. We right. talking about 500,000 views back in 2008. Man, yeah, that's, yeah. Viral. that's crazy. That's, that's yeah. viral. Yeah. So I was into the clickbait back then, and that's what run the numbers up, the controversy mm-hmm. and all this stuff. But the thing was, the industry didn't respect it. Yep. And so I learned then, you know what? If you want any type of shelf life, if you want any type of longevity, Stay away from shit like that. So that's that's a perfect segue. Yeah. Um, what what advice would you give to young up and coming personalities that's trying to get into media? Well, basically, it, it's it could be universal, but specifically yeah. media. Commercialize yourself. Make sure that you're commercial. Now, when I say that, I don't mean like wear suits and all that type of stuff, or you know, be all pop tart. You know. Yeah, yeah. Right. I'm not saying that, but make sure that you. Step up your commercialism that way that more people uh, be able to, you know, look at what you're doing and then treat you just like 85 South or, mm-hmm. you know, treat you just right. like a, a Sway in the morning or uh, the Breakfast Club and all of that type of stuff. Because it's no different. If you guys think about it, it's no different than um, when you have when you're an artist and you got music. And what DJs DJs always tell you? They always tell you, make sure you got a good mix and make sure it's mastered. Because if I put you in the mix and you come on right behind Jay-Z and I got to turn your stuff up because it's not loud enough, then, you know, you got to be able to, you know, flow right within the same vein as the others, you know, the Mm -hmm. big dogs or the the more established. No shortcuts. And so that's my thing is, you know, commercialism, professionalism. And, you know, that's pretty much the advice. Um, As far as the controversy, you know, I say stay away from it. Um, I did an interview with Big Motor a few years ago. Y'all know Big Motor, right? Hunter around, Hunter around, Hunter around. around, around, Live, live, live. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to Big Motor, man. Um, I did an interview with Big Motor, but I waited to after the Shaq Lizzie stuff kind of died down. I didn't want to dive into that, even though I could have. I didn't want to dive into that right then. Because, yeah, right then it was hot. It was and hot. Man, that interview probably would have had like 100,000 views or whatever. But I knew to um, maintain professionalism with my brand mm-hmm. to yeah. stay away from that shit. You know what I'm yep. saying? Mm. Like stay within 100 feet. Why? Because who is Shaq Lizzy signed to? Who are his label mates? Right. So what if I come right. on with the guy that popped off, did some 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 stuff with him, you know, negatively, 
And now his label see this. Oh, he's associating with them. Right. Yep. Right. You're with the ops. We're finna right. cut your pipeline right. off. So yep. right. now all of a sudden, their artists, you know, who's on that label, they not go rock with me. So I knew to wait on things to die down. And then it's about how you do this shit. I'm not saying don't talk about what happened, but it's how you talk exactly. about it. Right. right. I remember Tyree said some shit a long time ago. He said, you got to learn how to deal with shit without stepping in it. Ooh. And so that's how I do my interviews, I get them to do all the talking. Yeah. Right, right. I don't really, it don't, I don't side with anybody. It may seem like I side with somebody. That's the way I format it. But if you really look at it and really pay attention, I'm neutral the whole time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. for instance, in that video, I was like, so you mean to tell me that you were reaching out to this guy for a feature? You were trying to pay him. You were trying to put money into his pocket. This is how he feeds his family. And yeah. he told you, get the fuck out of my face. Right. You said, get the fuck out of my face. Exactly. So <laughs> it sounds like yeah. I'm signing with Big Motor, but the way I asked, though, I was simply asking the questions. questions. Right. Yeah. And he said everything. You right. know, so it's all about how you do it. I'm not saying don't do it, but just be careful how you do it. That way, people don't put you on their block list. You know, definitely. That could have been one of the things I said when y'all asked me what was the biggest obstacle, but you didn't hear that come out of my mouth. Correct. Ain't nobody blocked. Ain't been blackballed. You you know what I'm saying? Because exactly, you got to know how to navigate around shit like that. You know, definitely. Man, it's a question that you guys asked me off camera. I mean, off uh, off recording. Y'all got to ask me that, man. The one about the. Dealing with people who are assholes and all that. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I want to talk about yes, this. Yes, okay. sir. <laughs> okay, well, here, let's go. Let's get into it. Ask me the question. Then okay. I ask it. <laughs> okay. So, dealing with negative people yeah. or people that are in your way. Or they got an ego. Yeah. How you dealing with that? And who? And, and, and if you don't mind telling the 5100 podcast, sure. who were they? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all ever seen the Temptations movie? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. David Ruffin. Y'all ain't nothing without David Ruffin. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Leon. Yeah, man. Oh, Leon. for real? Yeah, for real, That's man. That's crazy. Leon, I did that interview about two years ago, around this time, two years ago, man. It was crazy. Now, the interview came off pretty okay. Yeah, I actually you seen know. that one, yeah. yeah. It came off pretty okay, but like y'all say, man, you don't know about the come up. You don't know about the behind the scenes and the backstage and what happened behind that, you know. Um, of course, he was in town. Um, he actually is a, a, a singer, you know. He, mm-hmm. he does music or whatever. He's an artist. So he was in town for a show. Now, mind you, I had already talked to the people about the interview. Everything was cleared. Everything was fine. Matter of fact, I was the only media platform that was there. You know what I'm saying? So it's basically like, okay, you finna do this with him. Mm-hmm. Then everything's cool. So, you know, me, I'm... You know, when I get out here, man, I'm, I'm I call myself Brink Morant. You know what I'm saying? I'm a point guard. You Let's know, go. I'm a point, point guard <laughs> Shout of the out, game. Ja. You know yes, what I'm so. saying? I'm, I'm out here. I'm thugging. You know, a hey, uh, team captain of apparel, apparel coming soon. You know, I got to say that. Oh about yes, to, sir. They're about to pop out with some. You know what I'm saying? Y'all go see that. Like I say, with the team captain. You know, see over there. It ain't game banging. We just showing that right. every team captains around here. Yeah. But I like to call myself the team captain of Memphis media. You know. Um, Definitely. So when I get into uh, a, a venue i'm scoping out everything you know i equate some things to basketball court vision so point guard court vision Oof. you see yeah. everything i'm looking at everything i'm mapping out where i'm gonna do this interview what my lighting is gonna be like where i need to put my lights i'm mapping out everything court vision boom i'm looking at the people who i can throw the ball to who i can you know assist yep because you know sometimes you gotta you know get out there and get your hands dirty a little bit so I peeped the situation. He was getting ready to perform. He's standing over there right next to his um his green green or dressing room or whatever. He's waiting, you know. They the music is playing. He's just looking. He's standing there right across from me. What is that mic stand doing out there? I don't want that mic stand on the stage. I said, I got you. Right. I ain't even there for that. Right. I'm right. not your roadie, I'm not your assistant, but yeah. I, I'm court vision. I run over there to the stage. I tell the, the the guy who was hosting, I said, hey, the brother say he don't want the mic stand. Dude, looking at me crazy, I'm like, that's what he said. Go mm-hmm. take it up with him. Yeah. Right, right. I grab the mic stand, and I move it. Take it off stage. I go back in there. I said, all right, you good. He was like, where's the mic? I need the mic. I got you. Right. I'm over there again. Mind you, I'm there to do an interview. Yeah. Not be your roadie, not right. be your assistant, not be the help, but I got that court vision. Yeah. Right I'm a point guard this game. 
run over there. Hey, the brother say he need the mic. The host looking at me crazy. He like, bro, this too. I'm like, hey, take it up with him. Get the mic. Take it back. Here you go, brother. Right. Thanks, man. Thank you. Go out there. He do his set. Everything's cool. Go take a break. Come back. Do another set. All right. Everything's dope. Now the brother's taking pictures. He's signing autographs with people and all that type of stuff, you know. Now, you got to remember, this is Leon, and about 20, 30 years ago, I guess kind of maybe he was considered a sex symbol by women, you know, right, so right, you got right. the 40-plus, 40-plus yeah. granny cougar thoughts in the <laughs> building, right, 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 you know right. what I'm saying? They trying to get their thing massaged on, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, okay, you got all these freaks in the building, they trying to take pictures with them, and, oh, where your hotel at for the night, and I wanted this and I wanted that, and I'm just looking like, my y'all for real. Right. I'm here to do business. Real talk. I didn't come to kick it. I didn't come to hang out and parlay with this man. I didn't even come to see the brother's show. You know, I'm here to do business. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing about me. I never was the one to want to hang out with these cats. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, I'm here to work. I'm trying to get this work so I can put this work out. As soon as as I get finished, take this picture. I put this picture on social media. Boom. You know, likes. Hey, uh, Brink, I want to do an interview with you, man. Man, I see what you got going on, man. Uh, how much you say again? Uh-huh. Because that's what you got to do. Yep. That's, yeah. that's another piece of advice for you guys, too. You know, and everybody out there that's listening, make sure you have them good looks, you know, and that's a good look. Okay, so fast forward, we get to, hey, where's my food? You know, all the people is pretty much settled. Where's my food? I'm hungry. All that type of stuff. So he's he's getting into that diva mode. You know, oh, I mean, you got one of them. He's getting into David Ruffin mode. Yeah, basically. where's my food? <laughs> I haven't eaten anything yet. I did this show. I did all those pictures and I did all the sign all the autographs and I sold t shirts and I this and I that. Where's my food? Okay, sir, it's 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 being prepared now. It's being prepared now. I'm by this time. I'm setting up. I got my camera. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm I got ready. work to do. Yeah. I'm ready. I'm ready. You know what I'm saying? I'm ready to put that work in. So I'm. Looking at my clock, and I'm like, man, we still ain't did the interview yet. You know, I'm trying to get in and get out. So I holler at the host, and I'm like, or the promoter, and I'm like, hey, yo, uh, hey, man, it's, it's such and such time. Y'all see it? We only got the building and such and such. Mm-hmm. I got my setup right there, and I ain't going to take but five minutes. Can we go out here and just get this going? Oh, yeah, he's a little cranky right now. Such and such. I said, I understand all that, but this ain't going to take long, you know. So... The promoter go holler at him. And, of course, I'm standing off in the distance. I see the promoter holler at him, looking like he's kind of big and type yeah. shit. And I'm like, I read body language. I'm sorry. He's kind of big and shit. And then I see him point towards me. And then Leon looking at him mad. And then he looks at me mad. And then all of a sudden, you know, I see, you know, the promoter. He's just like, thank you. Thank you. Like that type of shit. So all of a sudden, Leon and the guy's Kind of tall. I don't know if y'all, you know, yeah. realize that. But the nigga about six folk, you know. But me, I ain't scared of shit. Anyway, <laughs> he walk up on me all fast and mad. He looks into the room where I had everything set up. Looks in there. Then he turns around. How long is this going to take? I got to eat. Why? Wow. And I was like, oh, well, uh, hey, you know, shouldn't take no more than about five minutes. All right, come on. And I was like, what the fuck? Wow. This is my That's crazy. Is. Wait a minute, homie. Yeah. I'm the same nigga that helped you out. Took the mic stage off the stage. Uh, I mean, the mic stand off the stage. I took brought you the mic. You know what I'm saying? I've been facilitating for yep. you all night. I'm talking about Brink Morant, Point Guard, Memphis right. Media. <laughs> right. How you doing? That's, yes, that's me. You see what I'm saying? Like, you've been seeing me scoring all night. Why you tripping on me? You know what I'm saying? So, I remain humble. So, I had a, a little point of the interview in the beginning of the interview. Of course, you guys probably seen mm-hmm. Above the Rim, right? So, it was a part on there where Dwayne Martin, he said something to, to, to Leon. And then, you know, Dwayne Martin, I mean, uh, Leon always talked to Nutso. Nutso, yep. that was the cat that, you right, know, right, right. he, you know, jumped off the, the, roof, the roof, you know. Yeah. You know, that was his partner or whatever. So, when I said, hey, man, you know, it's definitely, you know, amazing to have you on the show. You know, he's like, oh, well, you know, thanks for having me. And then so I played off of that. I said, you hear that nut so? He said, thanks for having, you know, it's great to have him or something of that nature. And then he just looked. He like, didn't say shit. Like, he didn't sell it. He didn't say nothing. Oh, that's above the rim. Now the brother just looking mad. He just looking. That's crazy. Imagine the awkwardness. Like I said, y'all go back and watch that interview now that you know yeah. that. But, I mean, imagine the awkward feeling. Of silence. The nigga didn't say nothing. I'm like, bro. You don't know your own move? I just pay homage <laughs> to you right. and my fav- your fa- uh, my favorite role of yours. Yeah. And you didn't even. I know most people probably come up to him. Hey, you're David Ruffin. David exactly. Ruffin. Y'all ain't know without. 
I, I came from left. You know, yeah, so right, I came right, different. Right. I hit you with the blood of the ring because that movie meant more to me than the temptation. Yep. It got Tupac in it. Right. Marlon Wayans killed Tupac on the end, so that's who yeah. killed Tupac, if y'all wondering. But anyway. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Working new. <laughs> but anyway. 5100 podcast. I promise, man. This is what we doing. <laughs> Don't y'all call 528 cash, niggas. But anyway. <laughs> I'm snitching like, what's that's nine, the six, old nine? 36 jump. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, man. So. Like I say, man, he was a complete and total asshole, man. And, you know, I don't really care for him, you know. One thing, and I'm going to say this, you know, uh, rest in peace to my brother, Jeremy Wilson, man. I love you so much. One thing my brother said to me after um, we did that interview, and I told him about it, he was like, man, fuck that motherfucker. He ain't nobody. Fuck him. You probably got more money than any, more money than him anyway. Fuck him. Oh, ugly motherfucker, you know, yeah, just going yeah, off. Yeah, and they just right, put right, so right. much into me. So, like I yeah. say, my brother for having my back, man. I wish he was still here. But, hey, that that definitely lifted my spirits after, you know, shit like that. Yeah. But, I mean, that's just one asshole, man. I'm going to be honest with you. Y'all know how I mentioned Roxy early, right? Right. Roxy uh, Diaz, you know. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. All right, so... Another part of that story that she I didn't tell you. She having problems, too. Man. Get your hoe, man. Yeah. Yeah. Webby. Yeah. Webby. Get, your hoe, man. get your hoe, man. Get your you hoe, man. You hear me? He got a right. You hear me? Back to the bubbles. <laughs> 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 Shout out to Webby. I did an interview with him, too, man. Yeah. Webby. Webby is a fool. I remember that. Like I said, all this shit yep. online, man. But anyway, back to the um that, that story I told you guys about the Africa in April and yeah. all of that. Yeah. Okay. So, Roxy was actually there that night mm. um, at the, um. am I right or am I wrong? Was she there that night? No. She was there the week before. The week before. Because all of this was around that time. So she mm-hmm. was there the week before. So um, it was some type of event um, for the children or some shit. I don't remember. You know. Oh, no. Nah, I'm, I'm I'm wrong. I'm wrong. That was all the same. It was all the same. I'm, I'm, I'm getting my wires crossed. It was so many events. But anyway, it was all the same night away. Yeah. Anyway, um, I go up to her. Now, mind y'all, this is after I put out that video. You know, the one that got like 500 some thousand views or whatever mind you i go there to do an interview with her you know we in the club you know so i approach her she's in vip we in the club so i said hey uh hey my name is brink such and such uh come on such and such channel and such and such you know i was just wondering if i could do an interview with you and then she just gave me this stank ass look talking about some I don't do interviews. Wow. And I'm like, my nigga, you do interviews all day, every That's day on your TV. Job. That's your right. job. That's what you do. Like, 106 and Paul, what y'all do? Just look at niggas? I mean, what, what is it? <laughs> you know? So I was like, well, all right. Well, can I at least take a picture with you? And then she was like, yeah, come on. So now, I don't know how y'all lie about respect when it comes to women. You know, like, to me, it's like, and that was a dumb question, but I got to set this up. Right, right, right. right. To me, it's not respectful to take a picture with a woman who you don't know. She don't know you. It's not respectful to take your picture with the arm around her like yep. that. You know, because to me, that shows ownership. That's yep. like, you're right, my guy. Right, right. So it's kind of customary to take a picture with your hand and the small of a back. Mm-hmm. Too low, that means you in pervert. Yeah, you don't want too much. <laughs> too yeah. high, yeah. you know, it's just kind of weird. weird. So yeah, right. you find that little happy medium, and that's what I did. So I find a little happy medium in the small of a back. Boom. So I Instantly, I look at the camera and I do my young brink pose. You know, right, my yeah, pose right. at the time when I do my thing. All of a sudden, I feel a hand grab my hand forcefully and take it and slam it onto her shoulder. And remember, that's the pose I was avoiding, right? Right. And I'm thinking, the fuck? So I look to see who's doing it, and it was her. She's the one who grabbed my hand Damn, and slammed it what? onto her shoulder. So when I saw her face, she had this mean-ass facial expression. And I was like, huh? And then her security, oh. big ass nigga, looked like the rock. Motherfucker, 6'2, <laughs> six, 6'3, two, six, 240, big motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. He got his shades on. He's You can see him in the background of the picture, too. You know, that picture is on my Facebook and all that. But anyway, he's leaning in looking mad. And I was like, hey, my bad. Yeah. I didn't yeah, talk. know. You right, know. right. That yeah. wasn't me, G. Exactly. So we <laughs> took the picture, and then that was pretty much it. But I'm like, damn, for you to be so. Nice and so bubbly on TV, like you're a real asshole in person, like for real. It's crazy that you say that, but I want I want to flip that question. What okay. about interviews that you feel like were amazing? What were some of the the highlights so far? Mm, my favorite, my my favorite interview. Give me is, top three. Give me top yeah, three. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. So number one would be David Banner. That was my favorite, oh, favorite yeah, interview definitely. of all time. Oh, Mississippi. Man, so. David Benner, man, that interview was incredible. 
Um, number two would be uh, probably, um, I don't know if y'all know her, uh, Demetria McKinney. She played uh, on um, House of Pain, um, Janine. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the second time I interviewed her, we were backstage at R. Kelly concert because R. Kelly brought on the Black Panties tour. And um, okay, okay. she, man, hey, they took care of me, dog. Like, her catering was my catering. We in there. They even gave us, you know, tickets to the show. So after we hey. finished the interview, like, we went out there and watched R. Kelly's show. So I actually saw R. Kelly perform, and I know, you know, that's not the greatest thing to say right now right, due right, to the climate. Right. right but uh, right. I've actually man, saw him perform. Man, a legend. The man is incredible. Can't take it from him. Nah. Nah, I can't. I can't. And it's crazy. This girl I smashed him years ago. I saw her on stage. So I wonder if he, uh, anyway. Oh. So, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> she's, she's a flight attendant now. <laughs> She gets around, but uh, <laughs> anyway, so Demetria McKinney was number two, and um, number three, that's kind of difficult, because I always lean on them two. I've never really thought that far to three, okay. Okay. Um, but I guess by default, probably, um, uh, I'll say, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I don't know how I forgot her, but uh, Keisha Knight Pulliam, she played Rudy oh, on the Cosby man. Show, you they, know? Ooh, I know yeah. she, hey. Hey, is she fine as she is on camera, bro? Man, she finer than that. Man, you go lie, And this is what's Rudy. crazy. What's, this was crazy about that interview. Um, I think the only people that was there was like News Channel Three and me. Wow. And like that was phenomenal. So when she came to me, you know where I I had my stuff set up. Um, like we did the interview, and it's crazy. I'm gonna say this. You know, I don't know if I'm supposed to say this, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Um, the PR told me. These are the topics that you can't talk about. Okay. And they were like, you can't mention Bill Cosby. Okay. You can't mention the Cosby show. And you can't mention her divorce because mm-hmm. she was, you know, kind of yeah, going I remember yeah, divorce. Yep, that was yep. ugly. And I'm thinking, well, I don't give a damn about your divorce, <laughs> but the Cosby show, like, right, that's right. where we know you. It's like, it's that's yeah. an integral family. So it's like, I mean, what am I supposed to do? So they was like, well, you can't mention it. And I was like, oh, so I could talk about it. I just can't say that name. They was like, yeah. I bet. So, you know, I did my thing with the interview and she just kind of, you know, she did her thing with it. You know, I was like, how was it to be a part of, you know, such monumental, you know, TV show? Yeah. And then she just kind of took it from there, you know. But I thought that was just kind of weird. But, of course, like we was talking about climate, you know, Bill Cosby wasn't um, in the most positive light at the time. So, you know, I guess they kind of wanted to kind of steer clear of anything of that, yep. you know, just to not portray support, you know, for that and Public all of that. So, yeah, so hey, I get it. I get it. Respect. But it I, that was weird to me. Nobody's ever done that. But um, I'm going to tell y'all, like, after we got through with the interview, like, she was, you know, just chilling over there. Like, normally celebrities, they get up and go, all right, well, thank you. Mm-hmm. But she just sat there with me. And like didn't move, so I started the conversation. I was like, "So, how was your flight?" That's one thing I learned. If you ever get somebody coming in town, I always ask them, "How was your flight?" That's like that icebreaker. There you yeah. go. You break the ice. You know what I'm saying? And then she just started gushing about it, and then yeah. we was just talking. So then her people come over there. It was like, "Hey, um, your food's ready." She was like, oh, "Okay, well, can I just chill over here?" And then she looked at me and was like, "My boy." She looked at me and was like, "You don't mind, do you?" I was like, "Oh no, that's, <laughs> no, ma'am. that's cool. Like, yeah, let's, yeah, I'm, yeah." yeah. Want the pudding, and then so <laughs> yeah, I promise, no. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> that's one of my moves, right yeah, there, man. Yeah, you yeah, beat me yeah. too. <laughs> I'm glad you said it, not me. But um, yeah, so you know, I was like, "Yeah, cool. You know, we can kind of, you know, just chill or whatever." Yeah, I'm cool with that. And then so we started to get more into dialogue and then her people came back. They was like, oh, but um, it was another lady that was there who was a part of the uh, Dress for Success uh, company. Yeah. And that's basically she was in town for their event. Mm-hmm. And so they was like, oh, um, well, he has to do an interview with them, you know. And then she looked at me. She was like, you got to do an interview with them. And I was like, yeah. And she was like, oh. Okay, and then she got up and left, and I was ah. like, "No!" <laughs> but that's the thing: you gotta, you know, somebody invites you to their house, you gotta, you know, what I'm yes, saying? sir. It was because of their event why right. I got the interview, yeah, so business, I had business, to. You know what I'm saying? First, but man, 
man, I was man, I was falling in love with that girl. Ah, it's y'all ever heard going. of love at first sight, man? That's it, right? You believe in it? <laughs> yes, I sir. did. I promise, I did, man. I was falling in love with that girl, man. Man, Rudy. But I done had so many different uh, celebrity encounters, man, with different um, beautiful women. Um, oh, what's that lady's name? Um, uh, Jasmine Sullivan. Yes, sir. Jasmine Sullivan, man. I was at Essence Festival in New Orleans. And I was just standing there, and she was walking with her people, and she just she had her eyes on me. See, I was wearing the perm back then, you yeah, know, back in the day. So skin. I had the perm ponytail out, you know, real <laughs> hair, no, no sewing, you, you know, what I'm saying? Yes, real money, Mike, in yeah. pimping, ism, whatever yeah. you want yes, to sir. call it. But um, she was just looking at me, and then I was just looking at her, and then we just followed each other with our eyes the whole time, and I was like, in my mind. Jasmine Sullivan is looking at me. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Like, to me, that was phenomenal. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just, you know, being able to be in situations like that, you know, man. And she a different type of fine. Yes, yeah, sir. Man, I tell y'all somebody who uh, who was eyeballing me some years ago, Um, and this is before I even got into the entertainment industry, man. This back when the Hickory Ridge Mall used to be open, man. Mm, y'all know old girl uh, Candace Parker? Yeah. Yeah. Player? Yeah. Man, yeah, I'm telling sir. you, so I'm in the mall with my homies, and of course my homies can vouch for it. This is probably like 2005-ish, you know, 2006 is one of them. You know, of course the motherfucker t- tornado came through yeah. there a couple yeah. years later, and boom, when they ain't nobody in the week. mall no more. But anyway, man, we in the mall back then. I don't know if I had my grill. I probably had six on top, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? White gold, uh, <laughs> white gold <laughs> trim, yellow gold, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. With the princess cuts, whatnot, yeah, yeah. you know. Probably had that in and just probably had some Jabos on or some shit. Yeah, you know good what I'm Jabos. Saying? With mine with the white pouses. <laughs> you hear me? With yeah, the sir. 2X tall teeth. You hear you know me? Fresh as hell. I'm just trying to set the, set the tone for you. I might have had a, I might have had a headband on like yeah. Gotti. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Gotti used to rock the yeah, headband yeah, yeah. Yep. and all of that. You know, braided to the back with the Iverson braids. Some shit like that, you know. And like we're walking and I see this tall, fine ass, light skinned girl, and she just started looking like right. out of all the cats in the group, she's looking at me. Right. And I'm looking like, dang, she 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 jocking me. She jocking yeah. me. I didn't know who she was. Right. I didn't follow no women's basketball, right. you know, at the right. time right. or whatnot. Yeah. And then my partner Eddie, Dub D, he was like, Hey, why you know who that is? I was like, You talking about that fine, light skinned, tall girl? And I don't know. Her. Man, that's Candace Parker. I'm like, who? He right. was like, bro, she played for such and such. This was before she even went to the league. Yeah. And I was like, no, yeah, no. She played for Tennessee. Tennessee. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Uh, so I'm like, I don't know, you know. And I didn't talk to her, you know what I'm saying? Like, I should have, but I just, I don't know. It's like that. It just threw me off, you know yeah, what I'm saying? You never know. Like, you never know. Yeah. Man, uh, now I know Tesla yeah, Waters, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like yeah. with the Rudy situation, I yeah, know Tesla Waters, right, but right. back then I just didn't know. You know, maybe I kind of was feeling like, oh, well, she's somebody. Maybe she, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like she wouldn't go for it. But, nigga, she was looking. Go right, talk to exactly. her. Exactly. Right. Hey, man, when you 18, 19, you don't know all this shit. So, right. you know, it'd be like that. We talk about that all I'm the time. You, you got to shoot that jumper, bro. Yeah. yeah. Hey, you ain't going to miss it until you shoot it. You ain't exactly. going to make it until you shoot it. Man. man. Hey, got to shoot that jumper. go percentage on. Ugh, <laughs> I don't even want to talk about it. Bro. Yo, it's better than zero. You hear I, be, I be in them DMs, though. I ain't going to lie to you. And it's right. crazy for me to be uh, – uh, where I'm at, you know, as far as, you know, celebrity status or whatnot, you know, I still be in the DMs, you know what I'm saying? You're still a man, man. I'm telling you, bro. Yeah, I got I'm to. On, I got to. You know what I'm saying? I'm single, man. I'm trying to, yeah, hey, so. I'm trying to, I'm trying to take it to the hole, Shaq. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Hey, I'm trying to take it to the yeah. hole. But yeah, I be in the DMs, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, I'm going to be honest with y'all, and it's crazy how the, 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 the conversation is going to go this way. Right. You good, you good, you good. Yeah. It's crazy. Like, I see so many warning signs now. You Ooh. know, social media, I'm, I thank, I thank the Lord for social media because you just look at a girl's page and it'll tell you, yeah, fuck water or nah, bro, don't yes, waste your time. Sir. So it's like, man, I see. As soon as I get on the page, I see that cover picture, and it's got five kids on there. Damn, strike one. <laughs> <laughs> you mean I got to take all y'all out to eat? No, sir. <laughs> we ain't going to Captain D. Nope. Fuck that. That's not happening. Mm-mm. But you got all them kids. And then, like I say, women be into so, so much weird stuff these days. Like It's a different time, man. I just don't know. You know what I'm saying? I don't know, man. They like, you know, hey, I want to see your energy. I want to check out your vibe. And I'm like, my what? Right. Huh? <laughs> 
<laughs> it used to be what's your zodiac sign? Right. They used to ask you what are Simple you? Simple shit. Simple yeah. shit. You yeah. know, I don't subscribe to that, but I'm sure I'll play along you with know, you. Yeah. yeah, baby, I'm a Sagittarius. What do you think about that? Right. You know? <laughs> but now motherfuckers they holding crystals up to my Bro. head and shit burning like, sage I'm trying to see I'm like baby <laughs> what the fuck is that gonna do you right, know what I'm saying right. if that ain't finna stimulate him and I'm yeah. pointing to my crotch if y'all can't see me <laughs> right. that's not finna stimulate him what I don't even not want it what we talking about what we talking about some women be on some weird ass shit these days bro it yeah. be throwing me off and hey I ain't trying to knock whatever people subscribe to or what they do you know what I'm saying I ain't asking you to believe in God you ain't got to you know what I'm saying you do what you do but some things just kind kind of turn me off when right. you're trying to you know we're trying to get popping you know but see we got to be man enough to say that yeah exactly that, that, that's the problem yeah, is yeah. we not setting the standard we not setting the environment Ooh, no more we bowing letting, down to the pussy yeah Ooh, we just accept we just you know and and, and and a part of that comes from women man Take me as I am. Ooh, right. Oh, I my goodness. Right. Oh, my I don't goodness. Have to. goodness. to. Who said oh, I my... had to? Boy, you about to. <laughs> Who said I had to? Like, Ooh, like. This is what we do now. You yes, know, uh... I, I, I'm cool. Don't get me wrong, man. I'm cool with an independent woman. I am. I like right. that. But. Don't get into the independent woman that the Willie Lynch letter speaks of, where they get into their frozen state. All right, of cut the mic, cut the mic. Oh, <laughs> my boy, she's about to do it. They about to start knocking on the door. Them yeah, black trucks is so. outside. The men in the black suits are about to come in here and they about to take me and throw me in the back of the black truck. <laughs> hey, look into this, look into this probe. Man. Mine, they finna hit me with the neuralizer. Shout out to Jay, yes, yeah, so. aka Will Smith. You know, they cut out the rest of his name. He just was Jay. But anyway, <laughs> but like I say, man, it's oh, cool yeah. to be an yeah, independent. An independent woman, right. I N D E, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Shout yeah. out to Webby, you know, we back to Webby, right? yeah, right. It's cool to be an independent woman, but don't get into the frozen state of independence that the Willie Lynch letter speaks of because that shows you that you don't need, need a man for nothing, you know, it's just you and your kids, and I'm enough, I'm their daddy. No, nah, baby, no, Father's Day is not your day, Mother's Day is your day. <sighs> You know what I'm saying? Right. I know your role. All that right. was one of y'all. That was one of y'all. Uh, yes, all right. That was one of y'all. He did titles. his homework. That was one of y'all. Right. Titles. <laughs> know your role, and I leave it at that. I ain't gonna say what the rest of what Rock said, <laughs> but just know your role. And I'm not saying, you know, being a woman's place, but I'm saying like you can't be the man. You can't oh be the God. male factor. You can't be the father. You know, you are the mother, you are the nurturer, you are the, well, I know your dad said no, but he said that for a reason. Exactly. Not, here you go anyway, me he don't know what he's talking about, you know. Here, why you tell that boy he couldn't have mm -hmm. it? Because he's a boy, he mm -hmm. shouldn't be putting on lipstick. Yes, so. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like, you know, okay. come on. Bro. Okay. Bro. Fathers got to be fathers, men got to be men. Bro, it's so crazy that you, you following up on a subject that we did because we understand how important that is. Yeah. And even having somebody that's at your status, being able to, to confirm that, yeah. it mean a lot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because we live in a world where it's everything got to be this. Yeah. But we fighting the opposite of that. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm a married man. CJ done been married. So we understand the dynamic. So, brother, even to have somebody at the stature of you, to come back and bag that up, man, it mean a lot because we understand how these go. Well, I mean, it, I think the the ploy has been for a long time to break the family structure. And if you break the family structure, the main way to do that is take the man out of the equation. Oh, my God. So what happens is when you take the man out of the equation, boys don't know how to become men. They become effeminate and be like their mom. And then in turn, the girls, they don't know how they're supposed to be treated by a man. They don't know, you know. I always felt like whenever I become a father, if I have a daughter, I want to teach her all the game yep. that I used to run on females and all the game that I've seen and heard about that way she could be well prepared. And if she becomes a bystander, that's because you chose to. Exactly. Right? You chose to fall for that. It ain't like I ain't tell you. And the same thing with my son. Like, I want to teach him thing. how to yep. treat a woman. Yep. Same thing. Look. If a woman claim you per she she pregnant by you yada 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 this what you do this exactly. what you ask for this what you test for yep. you know you got to prepare your children and how can uh, a child be prepared if the father ain't in the house you know and look <clears throat> on that note <laughs> we got to get a part two of my boy man. <laughs> so definitely because we we went from the entertainment industry to real life uh, yeah, you I'm see how we did that yep. entertainment to real 
Life, Definitely. Bro. That might be the title of this job. It, it, Real that, talk. That, I don't know, man. That, that sounds pretty good. To it, me, it, man. Did. it did. So, man, I want to thank you, Brink, man. No problem, man. You ain't had to do this, man. I know Real you got talk. other shit to do, brother. Oh, yeah. We had to find a good time, but oh, yeah. I appreciate you coming through, man. No problem, so, man. So, look, y'all. CJ100, Tez the Five. Yes, sir. My boy, Brink. Tell them where they can find you at, man. I was sure finna ask you. Can I tell them where they can find you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, this is if the white van or the black truck is not outside and they're not going to grab me as soon as I step outside. <laughs> In case that doesn't happen, you can find me every Tuesday night on Comcast Channel 31 at 9.30 p.m. That's Memphis, Tennessee. Um, 9 p.m. Uh, Comcast Channel 6, that's uh, Mobile, Alabama, and 12 Midnight on Tuesday nights, of course. Um, 12 Midnight, Comcast Channel 29, that's Atlanta, Georgia. Um, the sitcom will be out, like I say. Uh, we're aiming at May 2nd, uh, Sunday, May 2nd, 2 p.m. That's going to be on the CW30 Network. Okay, sir. And, um, of course, www.brinktvshow.com. You can find everything from that at Brink TV Show on all social media. And, um, man, we just got a lot of things popping. After I get finished with this, I'm probably going to do, like, a romantic comedy movie. And then I'm flirting with a horror film. Maybe. Okay. Maybe. Okay. You know, I'm just thankful to be done bought all the equipment. So, it's like the, the sky's the limit yes, now. Sir. You know, I own all the stuff that I got. So Leave that know. working man mentality behind. Yeah. Become your own. You that, was one, that, was, that was one of y'all, y'all yeah, shows, sir. too. You right with yep. us, man. That Don't was one of y'all right shows, us, too. Man. Yeah. And that's that's something, y'all, you know, we as black people definitely got to be, man. We got to be wild, be, be your own boss. Yes, yes sir. sir. Yeah. All right, y'all. Well, it's the 5100 Podcast. CJ 100. Tears the five. Yes, sir. You dig. The five, one hundred, pop, pop, pop. Yeah, the five, one hundred, pop, pop, pop. Yeah, the five, 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 the five, five, the five, 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 the five, 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 one hundred, pop, pop, pop. Yeah, it's the five, one hundred podcast.